There you go. All right. So thank you everyone for being here today. You've already met our lovely Kemble up there. Uh, that's me with my little girl, Sunny, who is not so little anymore. She's good four feet long now. Um, but just so you have some faces to the names, um, I'm going to keep my camera off today just because I am only working on my laptop and I have very limited uh, screen. So that's what we look like though, in case you're curious. <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna go over today? We're first gonna talk about why a campaign story is so critical. This is important to me because I truly believe that in order to understand how to do something well, you need to understand why it is important. So that's why we're gonna go over that first. Then we're going to talk about the seven components of a campaign story. And then what about other important information? Because if you've crowdfunded before, or if you have um, contributed to a crowdfunding project, back to crowdfunding project before, then you might be used to seeing other information than what I'm suggesting here. And the reason that we don't pile in all of that information in your story is because Unlike other platforms, we have other places for you to put certain information that you can link to in your story. So that's why we try to keep it a bit cleaner and cohesive, but in the end, don't forget that this is your campaign, this is your story, this is your project, your baby. In the end, you do what you feel is best. These are just our recommendations. You can take all of them 100% to heart, or you can take some of them and incorporate them into your ideas, or you can tell us to bugger off and do your entire own thing. It's entirely up to you. However, um, Crowdfunder was started by Connection Point, and Connection Point is our overarching company. That's the company that Campbell and I work for. Crowdfunder is just one of our platforms. And Connection Point has been around since the dawn of modern crowdfunding. So as long as crowd, uh, Kickstarter, as long as GoFundMe, as long as Indiegogo. Um, so we are taking what we see is most effective in crowdfunding stories and we're giving it to you. So that is where we are coming from with these ideas. So let's get going. So why is a campaign story so critical? To to talk about this, we need to start way back when humans were still, you know, hunting, gathering, living in caves, focusing on surviving. That was our main focus. And while we were doing this, it's hard to imagine why we would evolve to love stories so much. And even if you're not really a reader, um, you're not a writer, you still love stories. If you watch TV, you love stories. If you listen to podcasts, you love stories. Humans are ingrained to want to hear stories. And this is because we learned something very valuable from them. So imagine we are way, way back in the day, living in caves and hunting, and one of our clan mates comes back after three days of being lost. And he has this wild story about how he got into a giant fight with a bear and he had to hit the bear over the head with a club and hide in a rock crevice for three days. We're going to be extremely interested in that story, but why would it be valuable for us to listen to this guy's story when what we should really be doing is focusing on our immediate survival? So do we have the food that we need? Is there a predator that is hunting us right now? That kind of idea. It's not extremely valuable for us to be paying attention to one guy when there might be a cougar who is stalking us in that very moment. But... If we're listening to that story, what happens is we, we get this rush of a hormone called dopamine, and that's the good feeling hormone. And we get this good feeling, not only because we're happy that our friend is alive, he didn't get eaten by a bear, but we're also learning what we could possibly do in the same situation. So that's why stories are important. They teach us something. So if we're going to pay attention to that, we need to have value. So that value is learning something and that dopamine release in our bodies is there because it's going to remind us that these stories are beneficial. So if we hear a story, we have a release of dopamine, 
that makes us feel good, that makes us want to hear stories over and over and over again. So that way we can keep learning. And so we are uh, fine-tuned to learn through stories. And that's why it evolved. That's why it became important. And if you're wondering, if you ever come across a bear, don't, don't hit it over the head with a club. You want to talk to it in a very firm and loud voice and not make any sudden movements and try to back away slowly. You do not want to hit it over the head with a club. <laughs> but what does this mean for crowdfunding? We're not in danger. Our lives are now focused more on social dangers and social learning as opposed to immediate survival dangers. So what does this mean for crowdfunding? Obviously we want to drive support for a project. So we want to tell a story that connects emotionally somehow with our readers to intrigue them enough to have them contribute to our campaign. So that's the obvious one, that's number one. But the second obvious, the less obvious one is to drive brand recognition to aid with future projects and build a following. So if you're here, I'm assuming that you're a creator and that you are never going to want to stop creating. I hope not anyway, because everyone should, everyone who feels that they are a creator should always want to be creating. Um, so if you are going to drive support for this project, you not only want to drive support for this project, but you want to establish a connection with your following. And you're going to do that by releasing that dopamine hormone um, in their bodies. And what's going to happen is if they see you with another project in the future, if they recognize you, recognize your brand, they're going to remember how you made them feel. They might not remember exactly what the, the content of your project was. Maybe they didn't back you. Maybe they just supported you. Maybe they weren't able to financially back you, but maybe they helped you share. Maybe they did something else, or maybe this was, you know, a year ago and, they read your comic book a year ago and they, um, they don't remember exactly every single word, but they remember they loved it. They remember it made them feel feelings and they're going to want to do it again. So those are the two main reasons why you want to elicit the emotional response in your supporters. You want to drive that support for this immediate project and hopefully garnish a relationship and build a bigger crowd for your next project. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with the seven components of a campaign story that we created based on thousands upon thousands of successful campaigns. But again, remember, this is what we would more call guidelines than actual rules. And I'm not going to try to do the pirate um, uh, accent. I'm not very good at it. But that's why I throw that in here is because remember, this is your story. I don't want to tell you that this is how you have to write your story. These are components that we feel are important for a good story. Feel free to take away or add what you like. Before we get into that, though, I'm going to talk about themes. I'm just going to take a quick drink first. So I want you to keep these themes in mind when you're drafting your campaign story. Trust and transparency uniqueness and intrigue and delight. So trust and transparency is always extremely important when you are crowdfunding because this is, this is not like traditional selling where you have a product, you have a proof of concept because that product already exists, it's there, it's tangible, someone can buy it and see it immediately. They are putting some trust in you that by backing this project that you will be able to deliver in the future. And they're not going to contribute if you aren't completely open and honest and you are leaving questions with them. So with every component here, I want you to remember to be open, to be transparent. Don't, I'm not saying that anyone would lie. Obviously you wouldn't want to lie on a crowdfunding story, but also don't try to hide information. People understand this is not your, your traditional, um, you know, business to customer experience here. This is, has a higher level of trust that's needed. So just remember that when you're writing. Uh, uniqueness. So every project is going to be unique and you are unique. Every person is unique. 
So make sure you try to describe that as much as you can. What makes you and your project unique? And then intrigue and delight. We are still selling something here. So you don't want to bore them with a bunch of, you know, technical details that might not be needed. If someone is super interested in the, uh, in the, in the little details of your project, you know, maybe you have an invention as opposed to, you know, a comic book or another book or a, a game or something like that. Maybe you have an actual invention that involves a little bit of technical aspects. If someone's super interested in that, then they will ask you for those details. Um, and you can put those details in other places. But what you're focused on here is you want to intrigue them into thinking that this is something they need in your life and delight them so that they do get that dopamine hormone released and maybe some other great hormones like endorphins. Um, those are all things that entice us to act. So when you intrigue and you delight, you are enticing your supporters to act and that action is donating. Okay, contributing. We don't use the word donate with crowdfunding. All right, so these are the seven steps. Number one, this one I'm a little bit more firm on. This is the catchy opening line. So this can be pretty much anything. It can be an agreeable, agreeable statement, a rhetorical question, a project intro that's captivating somehow. Whatever you do, you want this to be quick. You don't want it to be a giant paragraph. It can be two or three sentences, but not a huge paragraph. Um, you want it to be obvious and you, <clears throat> excuse me, you want it to intrigue. And this is because you never know where someone is coming from on the internet. You don't know how they got to your campaign. Hopefully they got to it while they were in a great mood. They're just kind of perusing everything. They see you have a crowdfunding campaign. They click on it and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm so exciting or I'm so excited. However, they could have come to your project from, you know, an email from a family member they would have rather not heard from, or a news article on something that's going on in the world that doesn't make them particularly happy. That is not the mood you want them to be on in when they're on your campaign. So even if they are in that mood, you want to change that mood. You want to bring them into your headspace, your line of thinking, and you need to do that quickly. So that's why we say a catchy opening line, something that will bring them into the, the tone, the framework, the headspace of your project so that they can forget wherever they had just come from and be in the right frame of mind to want to contribute. And here are some real examples from crowdfunder campaigns. So you can see that I'm not gonna read over these, um, but they're all different. So this one is, um, a proof of concept. So they've had 28 crowdfunding campaigns funded and fulfilled since 2017. So this immediately tells me that this is something that people like. So I'm automatically enticed to read further. This one up here, the, these guys went for more of a, um, an imagery. So imagine that you are here. This was a Burning Man campaign, I believe. Um, so that's another option. This, uh, this is the same idea. So this is more imagery. This is a bit longer than I would suggest. However, if you have a project where this fits really well and you can begin with this imagery, then I think this is great. So this is proof that there is no one right way to do it. But um, again, you are going to get the, this presentation uh, after we are done, probably tomorrow. So don't worry about, you know, um, screenshotting or writing everything down or reading all of this right now. You will get it um, eventually. But I just wanted to show you that there are tons of options to how to do this. Number two is the background of your campaign, why you created this. So this is great for trust and transparency. This helps your readers understand why you did this campaign and why maybe they should back it. So what started the idea? Why do you love it? So you being the creator, why do you love the idea? And write that in the frame of trust and transparency to help them understand why they might love it. So here is uh, a couple of examples 
Um, again, I'm not going to go over these in detail, but just remember that you don't have to only use words. You can use pictures. Um, this is a very simple line. At the end of 2019, I was having a difficult time working and creating art, so I decided to give myself a personal assignment to do a finished drawing every day of the year. And then she created um, a book out of it. So that's it. That's that's also something that um, all of us can really, um, really connect with, you know, all, all you need to hear is at the end of 2019, I was having a difficult time. Um, pretty much all of us were having a difficult time at the end of the 2019, beginning of 2020. So that's something that we can connect with. And that's why I love this one in particular is it builds that connection right from the get go. Number three is your project description. So this is the obvious one, what you created. This can involve a bunch of different things. Some things will apply to certain projects that won't apply to other projects. But this part are ideas that can apply to every project. So a concise and gripping description. You don't need, you know, 500 words only on the description of your project. You want it to be concise. Remember, people have limited attention spans on the internet, particularly for reading. So concise, gripping description. Make sure you say what makes it unique or special or important, usable, valuable, whatever your project is, what makes you unique? Because if you are a comic book writer, you are not the only comic book writer in the world. If you are a tabletop game designer, you are not the only one in the world. So you need to let them know what makes your project unique. And then what do your supporters need to know about you and your creation in order to feel those feelings that we want? Um, so what do they need to know about you? So for example, me. Um, I am an author. I have written um, my first novel that is in its second draft right now that I do plan on crowdfunding for in the future. So what do my supporters need to know about me and my creation to feel intrigued? Well, I based a lot of my novel on my life. So I would tell them a little bit about my life and how I at one point gave up pretty much everything I owned and I took a chance and I traveled to a country that I didn't speak the language, didn't understand the culture, didn't even understand the religion very well. So that has a aspect to my book. And that is something that I would include to intrigue my supporters to, to, um, to back my book because that it has an important value in my book and they would have understood that already. So that's just one small example of something that you can do that I think my supporters would need to know in order to feel intrigued about supporting me. Oh, do I don't know how I have it? Oh, right. So these are the bits um, that might apply to your story. It depends on what you have. So if this is more for if you um, if you invented something to solve a problem, you know, maybe you created a new type of, I don't know, sunglasses, let's say. Um, they might need to know what problem you're trying to solve and how your creation is a solution. Um, and if this is a solution to a problem, then what you want to do is you want to highlight the more important values of your creation. So the two or three most crucial parts, um, or sorry, most crucial details of that solution to the problem. Um, any relevant specs, so this might be the technicalities that uh, you think your supporters would need to know, and what different options are available. So if you have any variants, for example. So this might apply um, to everyone here as well. If you have, you know, hard covers versus soft colors or um, different special editions, that kind of idea. So these would be the variants that you might need to describe. You should put those in here as well. So here are the examples for, for that. How do I make my little Zoom guy go away here? Um, so this example is a, uh, a Burning Man project. So one tin soldier, they wanted to build these uh, um, statues, projects, whatever we want to call these. Um, they built this for Burning Man. 
So what they did was they broke down their cost into the blocks. And I love this bit because um, it probably, I don't know if this is exactly what each block cost, but they described why they, what this means to them right here. And then they broke down the crowdfunding into the different costs. So this is how much each um, block cost, and then there's transportation, and then there's the cost of fundraising. So this is very open. This is very transparent. It's also extremely intriguing. If you read this bit, it's very intriguing. Um, and also the details of it to make them understand the value and the cost. So that's what this bit is. So again, you're gonna get this recording and um, this campaign is easy to find on Crowdfunder if you search for it. So you can take a look at this campaign if you like, but they described their project in an amazing way and very important, it's not very long. So there's this bit and there's this bit and they broke this bit with headers. So it's not just you know a bunch of black text on a white screen, they made it look like it's easy to read with headers, with bullet points, et cetera. So not only is the content great, but the way they did it is great. Okay, number four, identify your target audience. This is for uniqueness. Not everyone is going to love your project, I'm sorry to tell you. However, you, want, you are not talking to those people. You are talking to the people who will love your project. So you need to tell them who those people are. So if you've done your crowd profiling, then this is a great way to do this. So crowd profiling means you identify the demographics of your target audience. What age group, uh, geographic location, profession, hobbies, um, do they own something specific? Do they have a specific living situation? A really great example of this is um, actually a project that I backed a couple of years ago, long before Crowdfunder ever existed. Um, and before I worked here, obviously, this was not on our platform, but um, I got a folding kayak. So Kemble and I live in Vancouver, as he mentioned. And if you know nothing about Vancouver, there are two things you need to know. Vancouver is one of the most expensive cities to live in in Canada, which means that most people our age live in tiny apartments. So we don't have a whole lot of room to store kayaks. And two is we have the ocean, we have tons of lakes, we have an amazing water sport community. And Vancouver's known for their outdoor culture, um, especially our coastal culture, which is a lot of boating and kayaks and that kind of idea. So I was the perfect target for um, this folding kayak because I lived in an area where there's lots of um, outdoor water activities. And I also live in an area where there's a lot of people who do not have the space for a traditional kayak. So if you did your crowd profiling, you would see that Vancouver would be the perfect target location for a folding kayak. And they did, they had their um, paid marketing that targeted people in and around the Metro Vancouver area. And that was me and I saw it and I went, yes, I am that human who doesn't have the space for a kayak and I do very much want one. So that ended up in me um, purchasing my folding kayak that Honest, it, it's under my bed right now because it's winter and I'm not going out in the rain. So it, it literally folds up and can fit under my bed. It's wonderful. So that's what I mean by identify your target audience. So you know who you're targeting, but also you, your supporters know that you are talking to them and that will drive more uh, contributions. Um, so again, who will like this comic? Um, I love this one. This is this story is for fans of twisted tales of superhero adjacent insanity and teenage discovery, somewhat like Yellow Jackets. Um, the Hood, The Boys, Lord of the Flies meets Glee by way of Green Lantern's Ring. That is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. Um, and again, here, am I going to like it? I love how they incorporated their own imagery and their own um, subheadings so that your eye immediately goes to, yes, I want to know if I will like this. 
It, will I like this? It's great for anyone who loves sci-fi, mystery, cute and not so cute robots, and the sense of wonder that fills dystopian world engenders. So again, you don't need huge paragraphs. You just need a couple of sentences. And this is all it took. I would click on this. Absolutely. And I did. I love this guy's comic. <laughs> All right, number five, invite your supporters to be part of the projects. So you, you absolutely need to ask for the contribution, but you need to do that in a way that is inviting. It's not, you know, donate to this campaign or you're a terrible person. No, help your supporters understand that they are the ones who are bringing success to this project alongside yourself. So let them know what is the impact their gift will be on your overall ask. Um, this is actually more where you might wanna put um, the costs to create. I did include it in um, a couple of points ago with the uh, Tin Soldier project, but this is another place where that could, um, where that could work well. So you can see that, you know, you can take different aspects of these seven points and put them in other areas and it's still going to work. Um, but you should absolutely put in what are the costs to create so that they have an idea of why you're asking for this goal specifically. Um, and that way they know that there's a viability to this project. You didn't just sit there and go, I would like $20,000. Yes, I would love $20,000 in my project. So I'm going to um, put my goal as $30,000 because it took me $10,000 to create. That's, that's not trustworthy. That's not transparent. So make sure that they understand what the costs were and why you're asking for what you're asking. And then what can they receive in exchange for their contribution? Forward. So this is not only... Um, physical items. I'm assuming that if you're here, you have a creation that will result in a perk reward for them or a product. So, you know, you've got the pendant that they have here. The people would get a bracelet. Um, this one is art. But one other thing that you can do is let them know that they're going to get updates on the project. So it's not just going to be contribute to my project and you'll get your product when you get it. It's going to be a contribute to my project and you're not only going to get this reward that you selected, but you will get updates on my journey to whichever goal you have deemed for yourself. So monetary goal or um, other goal, you know, maybe you hope to set up an online shop. Maybe you hope to get out to um, conventions or trade shows more often. If you talk about your goals for your projects and your sort of overall vision and promise to update them on that, that is more trust, that is more transparency, and it's more intrigue. You know, you're, you're helping build that relationship with your followers. So it's not only about what your donors get physically, it's how they are involved in your project and bringing it to fruition. This is just another way of showing where your costs go to that I really like. Um, visuals are always best where you can use them because again, most humans are visual learners. Um, they're not going to get a lot of, um, if you just tell them something, you know, you just write it down, they might not understand or they might skim through it. But if you look, at this, you can see extremely quickly without a whole lot of thought that, okay, yeah, a lot of that cost is um, printing and then paying creators if you have a coalition of creators, um, a buffer, very important, and processing fees. Like, this is great. I, I know that they have all of this figured out and I can look at that quickly and say, yep, okay, I get it, and then move on. Number six is to ensure they know what is going to happen immediately after they hit the contribute button. It is no um, secret that there is, there is fraud in crowdfunding. Absolutely, there is fraud. We, we have our own wonderful human being named McKenna who makes sure that we get rid of any fraud on our platforms, um, but it's still there. So 
It's made people a little wary of hitting the contribute button, especially if they've never done this before and aren't familiar with you. So it's a great idea to mention exactly what happens after they hit that contribute button. And this means letting them know, is this campaign all or nothing or keep it all? So if it's all or nothing, you want to let them know that they're not going to be charged unless you hit your goal. And if it's keep it all, you're going to also want to let them know that if they hit contribute, their transaction is going through. They have effectively paid for whatever perk that they or reward they have claimed. And again, um, you can include here, if you like, the breakdown of what the funds will be used for. Also extremely important is what is your timeline for printing, manufacturing, and delivery. So again, let's talk about my uh, kayak example. I claimed that kayak in um, summer of 2019. So obviously when the end of 2019 hit and 2020 came around, their supply chains completely stopped and they weren't able to open um, the um, ad hoc uh, delivery, like packaging and delivery plant that they had created. Um, this was an American campaign. So they, you know, they purchased their kayaks and had them manufactured elsewhere and then ship them to the States where they would have people package them. And all of that was disrupted obviously with COVID. So I didn't end up getting my kayak until a good year and a half after I claimed it, but I was never angry. I was never wondering because what they did was they continually updated their backers and said, everyone got a, um, a transaction number. And if your transaction number is between this and this, we are aiming for delivery, shipping and delivery between this date and this date. If it's between this and this, your delivery is expected between this date and this date. So I had a good idea of what was going on, why there were delays, and they were open and honest um, about the struggles that they had. And I was never angry about the fact that I had to wait for my kayak. I am sure there are people who were. However, they this... Um, company did everything they could to update us. So I was very impressed with that. What pricing model did you choose and why? So crowdfunder, sorry, I have to take another drink again. Um, Campbell, do we have any questions so far? I haven't really taken a break yet. Nope. I don't think we have any questions at the time, but I think we can keep, uh, keep on rolling. Okay, cool. <clears throat> when I get talking, I tend to forget to stop. So sometimes I have to re be reminded to stop. Um, so crowdfunder has some different pricing models than what you might be used to. We have our, our um, simply free where we don't charge you anything. We're just gonna ask them for a tip. We have our nearly free where we do have a 5% uh, platform fee plus your payment processing fees, but we're gonna ask your, your supporters to cover all of those fees for you. And then we have not free which means that we're charging you the 5% platform fee and we're not asking your contributors for anything. For that one, you don't necessarily have to let them know which model you chose. However, if you chose the simply free where we're gonna ask them for a tip or the nearly free where we're gonna ask them to cover your, um, your costs of fundraising if they want, then you should let them know that you chose that and that that's going to happen and why you chose that. Because you don't want them to get a surprise at the end of their transaction where they're asked for something more. Because if they're surprised about that, then chances are they, they might have more questions for you. So maybe they'll back out of contributing um, or you know they weren't aware of any extra fees and they're confused and it makes them kind of go, eh. You want to prevent all of those roadblocks from happening. So it's a good idea to put in this story what is going to happen in the transaction flow. So they are well aware and they know that they have the option to say no, especially when it comes to tipping the platform. Um, some people think that it's mandatory and it's absolutely not. So if you let them know that you chose that model because you didn't want to have to worry about platform fees, you only wanted to know that you had your payment processing fees and that's it. However, in exchange, the platform is going to ask for a completely optional tip that you can say no to if you like. 
Okay. Are there any risks involved? This is particularly important for all or nothing campaigns. So you wanna let them know that there is a risk that this might not go through and they might not receive their reward. It's as simple as that. Just let them know that that might happen. And then there's always the risks of, you know, delays with printing, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you foresee any challenges? This would obviously depend on your specific project. So if you, if you have any challenges in mind that you are worried about, throw them in there. There's nothing wrong with letting your supporters know what might happen. This is all trust and transparency. So put whatever you like in there. And again, here are some examples of, um, of how other people did this. So these guys, they put it right in the story. This is, this is our plan. Um, this is the campaign. We collect the money, we print the books, we ship the books. Pretty simple. Um, these guys, this was the, um, the, oh no, this was another Burning Man campaign. Um, they didn't want to spoil the surprise. They had a surprise for their campaign and they didn't want to spoil it. So what they did was they, they prepped for, um, they prepped for that surprise. They, they gave something immediately and that something was a video so they could see kind of what was going to happen and get an idea. Um, and then they, they gave them a bit of a hint. So this was a, a sculpture that was going up for Burning Man. So they wanted it to be a surprise. So they gave what they could. So I put this in here because I wanted to show you that you don't have to give away all of your gold um, if you don't have to. So you can be extremely creative with this. Just make sure that you give them enough, okay? You don't wanna be so um, mysterious that they have absolutely no idea what you're talking about because that also might stop them from donating. So I, I love that this one. So make sure you read it in the, in the recording when you get it. Okay, number seven is the obvious. This is the call to share and contribute. So the call to action, I am a firm believer in you need to spell it out for your donors or for your contributors. So ask them to contribute. Say, you know, if you, um, if you don't have enough to claim a reward, then, you know, consider a small contribution to the campaign overall. That's the obvious one. They know that they are there and they're going to be asked to contribute to something. But the least, less obvious one is the share. Someone could only have $10 to give you, but they might inspire a hundred more dollars in contributions to your campaign just by sharing it to their crowd. So this isn't obvious to everybody. You need to make it obvious to them. And I'm, I'm fine if you guys honestly just put, what do you do now? Number one, contribute. Number two, share. If you cannot contribute, that's okay. Please consider sharing this campaign with anyone you think would be interested. And again, you can get super creative with this. Be, be obvious. This one's great. Um, I like this one. So please get drunk before you donate and give whatever you can. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work for everyone. Be sensitive for some people. Um, but you do need to be pretty obvious in your ask to share because I almost guarantee you that most people will forget that that's the point of crowdfunding is to share. So make sure you ask. Okay, what about other important information? This is not uh, the be all and end all of information that you can include. There is a lot of other things like about you, about your organization, if you have one, um, about your past, about your history, that kind of idea. So we have other areas to input information in your campaign. So Crowdfunder is not just a one page, easy one and done um, platform. It's not like what you might be used to. This is more based around social sharing and marketing. So that's why we give you profiles. You have an organization profile and you can link to these in your campaign to make sure that your followers know exactly where this information lies. So you can include stuff in here like your background, um, team info. So if you have a team of people, let them know um, their bios and you can link to their user profiles as well. 
If you have any specific mission or value that you want to share or anything else that brings to the themes of your campaign. So trust, transparency, uniqueness. Um, what was the other one? Trust, transparency, uniqueness. I forget what the other one is. <laughs> um, but that is here for you. And this, um, the story editor is the same as the story editor in your campaign. So you can throw in videos, pictures, links, whatever you like. Oops. Oh yeah, this is what it looks like right here. So you'll see all of the organization campaigns along the bottom here. And this is all about their organization. And people can comment on it too. So it's kind of like your uh, activity feed on any other social platform. Um, did I skip forward? No, okay. So this is a user profile. So same idea, just like every organization has a profile, every user has a profile. So this is where you can talk about yourself. Um, photos, quirky tidbits about you, a relevant story. Um, I would put a lot of information about myself and my past and why I love to write in my user profile for my book when I, whenever I get around to that. Um, anything, again, that brings one of the themes to your campaign. And you can link all of this to in your story, in your crowdfunding story. So these are suggestions that we have. You can insert links as pictures, as buttons, as words, as whatever you like. You can even, um, oh, that's not yet. You can even put in extra tabs. So um, when you go to your story, you'll see that there's tabs up here that says story, updates, activity, et cetera. You can add two extra tabs in there. So that might be, um, oh, I think I have a slide of that after. Yes, I do. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. But you can link to those areas because if people aren't used to Crowdfunder, they're not going to automatically think to go look at your organization profile or your user profile. So you can link to them and say like, hey, you want to check out more about our organization? View our organization profile here. Link. And then there's the custom tabs. So this is what the custom tabs look like. This one is um, standard. How it works and FAQ, those are custom. That's what they did to bring more info to their campaign. Updates and activity are standard as well. But you can put whatever you like, but just you don't want to inundate that one story section with a lot of information. Um, part of that reason is because most people are going to look at this campaign on their phones. So if you have a lot of info, then they're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And chances are they're going to get bored before they get to the end. So if you break up their scrolling, they're more likely to read it. So that's why we suggest putting some information in an extra tab. Okay, let's take a quick breather. I'm going to take a quick drink. So if you need advice on mapping out your, your campaign story or just your strategy, um, we're here to help you out. If you type SOS in the chat box, um, Kemba will make a note of it and we can reach out and make an appointment to, um, to talk with you. That's free. We, um, we don't, off, we don't um, have payments for our strategy calls simply because we wanna help you be more <laughs> successful. Um, but if you have a lot of questions, we highly recommend you go check out the creator hub. Um, oh, I thought I had a picture of the hub. Let's go check out the hub. If you haven't seen the creator hub yet, <laughs> which you should have by now, this is the creator hub. So if you like, you can go to the forums and ask, um, other creators questions, our toolkits for how to plan, how to write a story, how to promote your campaign are all in here. Um, if you want more live trainings like this one, you can go here and see the um, see the schedule. Recorded sessions like this one will be here. Links to our help center. All of the info you need to know is right here. Uh, let's go to our slideshow. Okay, so we went over a lot of information. We are exactly right on time. So that's awesome. Are there any questions, Kendall? Yeah, so you can definitely go ahead and use the question and answer function or go ahead and raise your hand. Um, and we'll give a few minutes here. Um, just either raise your hand or use the question and answer function. We'll be able to unmute you and get that conversation started. But thank you so much, Shannon.
running through that presentation. That was awesome. Uh, definitely some great points in there. And yeah, definitely check out the Crowdfunder Hub. It's got a great uh, selection of how to kind of <clears throat> a lot of knowledge to consume and really it's there to help you be as successful as possible. We have a couple more minutes here just for the question and answer, or you, you can raise your hand function. <laughs> All right. So we have a question from <clears throat> Sadaf. Amazing webinar. Thank you. I'm from Iran and I'm afraid when I start my campaign, it turns into let's support this Iranian comic artist instead of it's a great story. I want to support it. So the main question is how can I separate the author from the project and find loyal supporters for my story and um and not because of the situation I'm experiencing? Oh, that's that's a great question. Um if you focus on your story, like the project, um, the story project, and not your your situation, then I I think I think that will get you what you want. So you know you you go through those seven steps and talk about your story, talk about your creation, and you don't have to put every single bit of information about yourself. Um, you could say, you know, who am I? I'm writing this because of um, ABC, you know, very quick. Um, don't make it a focus. And I think that will get you what you are looking for. Um, but yeah, I guess it all just depends on what your story is. If your story connects to your situation in Iran, um, I hope you are okay, just to let you know. Um, then then you, you, you might not be able to get out of that because your situation, if it connects with your story, then that might be what drives this campaign. Um, but one other thing that you can do is focus on where you want to take the story. What do you want to do with this? Um, so comic artist, okay. So are you looking to... Um, create a series? Are you looking to get more um, more focus on the situation in Iran in general? Like what is your ultimate goal? Not just for your project, this one specific campaign, but what is your ultimate goal? If you focus on that too, I think that might help. What do you think, Kemble? Yeah, it's definitely echoing, like hoping that everything's okay. I'm um, just with the most that earthquake there um it really does kind of depend on like how you position yourself and if you want to include that in your story it you know you can really it can help you get a lot of exposure um if you kind of lean into it and then you can get your crowd but it really depends like on what level you're comfortable with because you can kind of leave it out as much as you want or put it in as much as you want but it depends like if your if your goal is exposure um you know sometimes you can lean into those things but if you don't want to that's completely up to you and that's really kind of a a personal thing that you you, you can decide so it really depends on what you're wanting to lean into if you have a story to write then write it leave it, um, don't launch your campaign, and then you're free to reach out to us and ask us to read it for you, if you like. And we can let you know if um, if the story you're telling is giving too much information that you might not want. Um, so we're more than happy to do that. We also have another question from Salvatore. Um, so he says, I have a question about payment. Why only PayPal and Stripe? I try to run a mini campaign, but for a lot of people don't support me because they're not on PayPal or Stripe. Prefer pay me with contact or other cards. So I can answer this one. So you're able to use the pay. We only partner with PayPal and Stripe, but what you do is they actually do support pretty much most credit cards. So if it does say PayPal, they are able to use guest checkout um, and they are able to use a credit card, but we don't use any other direct payment methods. Um, but 
<clears throat> like those ones you mentioned, but they can use their credit cards or debit cards with Stripe or PayPal. They just have to say checkout as guest uh, with the PayPal option or Stripe. It does actually just ask for their credit cards. And depending on where you live, I'm pretty sure, and and your account, um, I'm pretty sure some direct bank transfers too, but that's mostly in the States, I think. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here and joining us. Oh, do we have another one? Yep. Uh, thank you so much. Now I can separate my projects to those that are connected to my situation, the ones that I have nothing to do with it. Thank you guys for your support. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you for good. continuing to come to the USADAF and hopefully we're able to give you some great knowledge and how to run your project and ultimately help you be successful. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, wherever you might be and take care and stay safe. Thanks so much.